Hello, welcome. Good evening, folks. How great to see you, as always. Michael here. <laughs> and Rupert here. Yes, good, good to be with you all. And if you've not come across us before, we are the prehistory guys. We do films, we do podcasts, we do uh, all sorts of you know, prehistoric this? archaeology stuff. Um, yes, if you search around the channel, you'll find out all about us. But um, in the meantime, you're welcome to this part seven of our watch party of our film Standing with Stones that we made way back in... Uh, Way two thousand six, seven, uh, eight. Um, yeah, if you if, if you don't know, if you, if you've joined us for the first time, welcome. If you've not seen us for the first time, over the past um, set, well, few, a couple of months actually, because we've had a few breaks, we've been going through the film in seven parts, and this is the last part. We started off down in uh, down in Cornwall, as the film starts uh, down there, and worked our way up the country, over to Wales, through Ireland, back into northern England. Last uh, week, was it? Or was it the week before? We were in Scotland, and here we're finishing off today. This last bit of it in uh, the Scottish Isles. We'll be going to Callanish on Lewis yeah. and uh, visiting sites on Orkney. And we've got some of you, we've noticed in the chat, there's a, a few of you from um, up in the aisles as well. Yeah. Which is uh, which is amazing. Uh, uh, Henry, or is it Henri uh, Macaulay, um, on the Isle of Giga. I've never been to the Isle of Giga. Wow, um, goodness. You're one of the little islands, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's amazing. Amazing. Uh, welcome, if you are, <laughs> indeed. If you are welcome, uh, if you are uh, with us for the first time, do uh, let us know uh, who you are and 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 where you are. You'll find that there's a quite a friendly bunch in the chat, um, because uh, a lot of them, most of them, are our good f Patreon um, friends who make it all possible. Yeah. Yes, you do. As well as our films and podcasts and stuff like that, all made possible through the power of Patreon. <laughs> and a lot of these guys that <clears throat> are people to, to make it happen, uh, check out our Patreon page if you mm. um, if you fancy uh, joining um, the splendid community. Okay, well, there's been a couple of things happening in the in the last week. Don't want to hold up business before we get on to um, uh, starting the film and uh, and sharing it with you um, starting the last part of the film and sharing with it with you I should say but uh, a couple of things we've been very busy um, uh, starting well starting I should say tying up the last end bits of organizing uh, a tour yes. that we uh, are uh, we host it's run by uh, the archaeology channel out of um, uh, uh, out of uh, Oregon and um, uh, yeah we'll be doing that in in September we'll be up in Orkney in in September all, be, all being well uh, and we'll be traveling down the country uh, yes. with uh, our guests uh, yes we we didn't actually know for sure that uh, well okay maybe we still don't know for sure but uh, we didn't <laughs> think it was going to be going ahead this year because of COVID and then obviously, uh, it, you know, when things started opening up uh, recently, so we've been crossing T's and dotting I's frantically, making yeah. sure that the hotels haven't gone out of business. And in fact, we had a reply. There was one hotel that we'd almost given up on um, because they hadn't replied and they hadn't replied. And I got a reply from them this morning saying, sorry, been off work for a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's so, uh, 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 going to uh, be a great trip. A... Ending, ending with a sunrise, personal, personal, uh, private sunrise at Stonehenge. It's Stonehenge. Oh, it's bliss. Yeah, it, it, it's mm. it's a good one. I mean, there are a couple of places left. I do believe it's not fully booked out, but uh, have to. How can we we'll put it? It's not the budget op tour option, is it? Quite. Uh, it's no, it's not a budget tour. It's uh, you know, it's um, mm. uh, it's it's all nice hotels along the way. <laughs> anyway, mm. that you know, it's a tough job. Somebody's got to do it. Let's move along. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> indeed. Let's. Um, yeah. uh, anything else? Oh yes, uh, we're we're promising to reinstate the prehistory show. 
We gave it a fair run uh, last year, and uh, we only got up to episode three, but we've suddenly come to the realisation that uh, actually as a flagship programme, it served us very, very well, and it speaks to Indeed. you know the way we like to do things uh, best. So look yes. forward to uh, um, a fresh strand of that coming along. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else, Rupert, before we uh, start? Um, I, 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 and at this particular moment in time, I'd say no, look, let's crack on with the show because yeah. so yeah. much has been happening uh, recently that we could be here all night just talking about that, couldn't we? We could, we could, we could. So anything <laughs> to say about uh, you know this last part, part seven of Standing With Stones before we, uh, before we kick off? Um, only that it was just bliss. <laughs> to make it really yeah. is all I can say. That there is something magical. I'm sure a lot of you will agree. Anyway, there is something so magical about uh, the Isles. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the Highlands of Scotland themselves are just heart-stoppingly beautiful, and the Isles are just magical. So, yeah, yeah this was, uh, you know, we worked hard, but it wasn't work. Yes, and despite the fact that, that we were, you know, working at the mercy of the elements and uh, contingency and timings and all the rest of it, um, the islands were pretty kind to us, weren't they? Mm. All right. They were. With that, I will sh launch us into uh, uh, the Scottish Isles. Where, uh, where are we? There we go. Let's go. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to stop it there before we actually get to the stones there, and and confess that I had great fun constructing that little little sequence and that sort of uh, little pacing moments. We, you know, is another case of of being lucky with the shots there. That stag appearing on the hill just as uh, we were lurking about trying to get other shots and the rainbow. But it was at the end of the day. At the end of the day, yeah. we were going back to. Oh, and suddenly there was this stag on the uh, on mm -hmm. the hill there. Oh, yeah, such a gift, such a gift. And the the rain, rainbow from the fairy, mind you, they're not uh, strangely not that uncommon, are they? Uh, given the well, the rainbows, no, not yeah. up there. No, not up there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. so much yeah. wet in the air. Yeah, yeah. In, indeed. And the, and the I have to say, it was it's a sublime piece of editing, Mister B. It really is. Um, uh, uh, well, thank you. Do, do you know what I? Hmm. I've I've seen it an awfully awful lot of times, <laughs> and it still sends hmm. shivers up my spine. You know, just yeah. uh, you know, obviously there's a connection and uh, the 
you know, the memory of uh, uh, yeah. being on the boat. And I, I, anyway, enough of that. Let's get to the actual <laughs> stones, which is what mm -hmm. it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about me. <laughs> I've been waiting to come here for years, and actually being here is more breathtaking than I ever imagined. Oh, Emma's here. Hi, Emma. No uh, photograph <clears throat> can capture the sheer majesty of the place. It's a work of Neolithic wonder. Greater even than the astronomical brilliance of the recumbent stone circles, Callanish is the greatest prehistoric observatory of them all. Situated on the Hebridean island of Lewis, I think it's utterly implausible that it was built by the islanders themselves simply for local use. Indeed, one of the enduring legends of Callanish is that it was built by black men who came from over the sea. There is a burial cairn here, but it was added long after the stones were erected, and lacking the stone altar of the recumbents, the implication is that this was a place of science rather than religion. The full lunar cycle of 18.61 years is marked and predicted by these monoliths, but here the wider horizon is the stage. Just once in each cycle, the moon seems to come down from the sky to touch the earth, disappearing behind the hills, only to reappear in a final display, gleaming between the central stones as it passes. We've only scratched the surface of its alignments. Here the intricacy is so complete the impression is one of a finely tuned clock marking the slow but predictable movement of the heavens. Throughout the site, notches and angles are cut into the stones, refining the accuracy and marking certain celestial events. The focus at Callanish of marking the full lunar cycle brings another point to mind which is relevant to many sites throughout the British Isles. The closest you can get to marking 18.61 in stones is 19, the number of stones in many sites, especially in Cornwall, and the closest you can get to marking half that number is 9. Other many circles of 9 stones are slightly less accurate version of the same phenomenon, and do the wider spaces between stones, which we so often interpret as entrances, actually mark a deliberate offset to adjust the inaccuracy of the circle. To me, the insistence on describing the builders of these extraordinary sites as animal skin wearing farmers is like saying that Britain's motorway system was built by shoppers. Up here, almost at the end of my journey, it brings to mind that I began working on this project about eight years ago. I've driven about 8,000 miles across the British Isles and I've no idea how far I've walked. Wouldn't surprise me if it was about 800. Fate must be on my side because without any deliberate planning and through constantly shifting weather-dependent schedules, I've arrived here five hours before a lunar eclipse. I said right at the beginning of the film that it's only by being here, standing with these ancient stones, that we can truly begin to get a sense of what they were all about. I've found over all the miles and the monuments that our forebears were so far removed from the insular communities of our imagination. And arriving here accidentally 
to be here on the night of a full lunar eclipse. It really does make me appreciate the mystical qualities that seem to have been so important to our ancestors. So we leave uh, uh, Kalanish. I think there's a fair, mm. fair amount to be said about that. <laughs> uh, there's a lot to be said about that. I, I just uh, I noticed uh, Kevin said you, you missed out the recumbent hill figure, Sleeping Beauty. It was one of those where do you draw the line? Because uh, you, you know it's you, you know what yeah, it's some things when you're there and you look at something in the landscape, you can see it. It's not like it's obvious, but, you know, you can see it. And to actually try to describe it on film, eh, do you know what? It doesn't really, unless you're making a point of it and trying mm. to show somebody, you know, and, and here's her boobs, um, that uh, it, it actually detracted from the, uh, you know, the kind of the, the romance of the, the situation, you know, trying to point mm. out, can you see it? Um, so I know what you mean, but it you know it was a choice just because it wasn't really working. Yeah. Um, but uh, for those of you that don't know, and I'm sure a lot of you won't, uh, that uh, animation that, uh, that that Mike put in of the moon skirting the landscape there and reappearing in the circle, uh, he used um, astronomy software to do that correctly for the time period so that's exactly how it would have happened uh to I, I don't know do you remember the date that you dialed into the software to get that michael no. <laughs> uh it's just it was the kind attention of to detail <laughs> was, yeah the, five thousand the years attention ago, to detail maybe. is just uh phenomenal uh, no yeah. you don't you've done cracking job there you have cracking job um mm. yeah i i and Here's the thing, uh, crossed fingers and all, we hope to be back up there before the end of, of the year. We're, we're certainly in talks to uh, mm. go up there and actually um, work in uh, concert with the, um, you know how to pronounce the, the, the proper name of the visitor centre uh, well, organisation. Tushkan, yes. Um, <clears throat> Uh, but we're working with uh, Alison Sheridan, who's uh, is she chair or uh, she's director of it? Director. Yeah. Um, so we don't know how that's going to pan out. How that's going to work? Yeah, <laughs> that uh, would be me. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, going back up there uh, again. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Fairly soon. I well, is was it? Lynn asked, "Was it really an accident?" It, well, hey, it absolutely um, was. Uh, it, uh, it, it, if you mean from our point of view, yes. If you mean anything else, mm, <laughs> uh, it was the yeah. most extraordinary set of circumstances. I'm. Uh, this is one of those situations where you think, I know that we've told this story a thousand yeah. times. Yeah. But you never know whether you're actually talking to people who haven't heard it before, <laughs> so you don't well, want to bore people. There'll be a but, few. Um, um, but no, in a nutshell, and I will say in a nutshell, uh, we'd just been filming. Uh, it had been one of our longest stints. We were on the road for it was just under six weeks in the end, and um, yeah. uh, and we had had a schedule mapped out, but that schedule was blown out the water. By yeah. uh, by foul weather. Well, uh, here's the and thing: we didn't know there was going to be a. We no, had we no didn't. Idea. No, we, we didn't. hadn't looked at um, lunar, uh, you know, uh, no. um, timetables. <laughs> no, no, we uh, we hadn't lost anything. We at were just, all. Uh, you know, we were just busy doing other stuff. It was not even, uh, mm. not even anywhere in our minds to be thinking of anything like that. Mm. And uh, we were already three days late just in the Lake District because the weather had been so bad. So by the time we got up to uh, to Kilmartin Glen, we were yeah, well, uh, we Glen, we were yeah. That's true, yeah, Kilmartin Glen as well. So you know, we were realistically we were probably nearly a week behind schedule. 
so if everything had gone swimmingly, this would not have happened. Um, but as it turned out, uh, yeah, we quite literally arrived there and we met. Uh, Thank Lynn you, Cobb. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, but the, yeah, the the weirdest uh, the weirdest thing, and I I never get tired of saying this because it's it is just the weirdest thing, is that we arrived at Canonish, and uh, uh, and we parked up and were walking around, kind of wrecking, just how you know, looking at angles, how are we going to do this, and there was nobody there, just us, except we saw this little tent over in the next field, halfway down the next field, a couple of guys there, about uh, three hundred yards away. And they came over to say hello. So it was just four people there at Callanish. And uh, and so we introduced ourselves. And, uh, and you know, the, most of you won't know, Mike, although Mike is, is, has always been Michael, uh, but his given name is John. And it was John and Rupert meet John and Rupert. It was just that's it. There's four people uh, at this place, and they'd come up from Birmingham, uh, so they'd come 300 miles for it, and we'd driven however many miles we'd driven, and we were the only four people there, John and Rupert and John and Rupert. Uh, it was just the weirdest, weirdest thing. And then, uh, as I said, we'd had lashing rain, nothing but lashing rain for day after day after day there had been patches like with the rock art uh, you know and stuff that we had some patches of nice weather but the last three days of getting there just lashing rain and we got to Kalanish and it stopped raining and the skies cleared and you saw on the film it's just yeah. choirs of angels uh, you know clear blue skies and then clear night and we stayed out all night long. Well, we went to bed about four in the morning, uh, having had just this beautiful clear night. We went to bed because we were absolutely exhausted. And when we woke up in the morning in the uh, in the van, and it was lashing with rain and thick cloud again, yeah. <laughs> and it stayed that way. Uh, Actually, it was th just there's, there's uh, unseen gift. footage that we'll be reviewing uh, maybe in a couple of weeks' time, where you'll see you c you can hear the wind and rain lashing. <laughs> And rather yeah, you can. looking rather looking rather jaded the next uh, <laughs> day, I have to have to say, yeah. yeah. But it was when, it was when mm. when they said, "Are you here for the night of the lunar eclipse as well?" <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, what lunar eclipse? <laughs> what lunar eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> what are we like? Yeah. Ah, what I know. Yeah. I know. But it was our motto. We set off with the motto. We'll. We'll we'll get what we're given. Yeah, you know we can't manage yeah. the weather. We can't manage you know the circumstance. We'll just get out there, film what's there. We'll, we, yeah. we'll get what we're given, and look what yeah. we got. Hey ho! Back, know, back to funny, really. the actual monument itself. Indeed. Is there anything more? We does anybody have any thoughts or questions? You know they want to. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Thanks, at, Cork. Yeah. <laughs> You're like uh, a reverse Bill and Ted, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, but no, Kalanish, uh, extraordinary and fabulous place, and we have not, we, I don't think we really scratched the surface there. We were lucky with the aesthetics and with the experience, but as far as uh, you know, mm. what, the, what Kalanish is all about, uh, we, we didn't really scratch mm. the surface there. And hopefully... Uh, later on in the year, as I said, we'll uh, get to do it. And if we do get up there, Emma, we, we will be coming to say hello to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, great to see you, Emmy, Emma. Mm. Okay, shall I continue in that case? Let's skip uh, over to the other side um, of uh, let's yeah. head east. No, David, it's just cheap French beer. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, head east. I'm, fo I'm following you in that camper van with a with a little um, camera on the dashboard there. Mm. Oh look, across the line! Look at that. Back on the mainland, travelling through the very north of Scotland, we danger, find a region danger. where there are few signs of our ancestors' presence. But every now and again, a sight like the enormous grey cairns of Campster will remind us that the communities were sizeable. 
The last leg of our journey makes that point all the more evident. Even the harsh environment of Orkney didn't prevent the construction of some of the most impressive monuments of all. The Great Mound of Maze Howe is much smaller than the enormous Maves Cairn in Ireland, but inside the beauty of the skilled workmanship sits in total contrast to the plain exterior. Each wall of the passageway is made of a single piece of stone 30 feet in length, and again the beautifully corbelled central chamber is illuminated by the sun at winter solstice. It's a huge undertaking which, like so many of the sites we've seen, doesn't fit with a small community of simple farming folk. Right across Orkney, this scale is maintained. The enormous Ring of Brodga happens to be the third largest stone circle in Britain after Avebury and Stanton Drew. Such a vast site for a small community of farmers? I don't think so. A little distance away, the improbably tall, wedge-cut standing stones of Stennis are even more impressive, even though most of them have gone, and like Brodga, the ditch and bank have also disappeared. Now, what we didn't yes. know at the time, that, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of hundred yards from where Rupert was just standing, uh, is the Ness of Brodga. Well, we're on the Ness of Brodga, of course, but the isthmus mm. there, but uh, the actual dig that pretty much started about the year that we finished there. I think they, I think they knew that there was something under the soil just before that in the, in the years, but they it was the next couple of years that they actually started to look under, get, get to look under the surface uh, at the Ness mm. of Brogga. And, and of course, we knew nothing about that, what was going to be revealed uh, uh, mm. underneath that landscape. Uh, I, I just... think the, the surprises are just going to keep on coming and coming and coming for some years yet. But um, yeah. uh, there, there are so many extraordinary things uh, about uh, Orkney that we couldn't cover them all in the film because you are forgiven you know, laugh film no worries there's no punishment <laughs> we have for latecomers is it no. um but i mean apart from anything else you know it's the fact that uh, that brodga the ring of brodga third largest uh, circle in britain and uh, it actually didn't have a bank it had a ditch not a bank uh but it's cut out of rock uh, you know, it's not just digging soil or you know grit out. It, they cut it out of rock. Mm. Oh, come on, you know you're not going to do that if something's not humongously important. Uh, it's uh, yes, it's a truly, truly wonderful place. Oh, and the stones of Stennis, you know those ridiculously tall stones. Can you imagine what that must have looked like when they were all there? Just stunning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, everything gets grouped together. But the, the, that complex there, you know, spans a huge amount of time. And uh, in, in terms of building, Stennis was not built at the same time as uh, as Broadgore, was it the other way around? Uh, mm. You know, you, you you wonder why the need for the two circles in such close yeah. uh, proximity. Uh, and of yeah. course, um, you know, as we're about to find out, we've got Scarabray just up uh, up the road. Um, yes. So uh, should we and, catch and, up with a couple of comments here? Well, indeed, um, I was going to say KW, um, uh, uh, who's obviously uh, worked at the Ness. Um, indeed, they that have. must yeah. be an <laughs> amazing experience. Yeah, yeah. What a great thing to to work on. Um, sorry, yes, you. But what have you? And have I was, I was just uh, before things disappear over the top of the screen. Uh, David still doing the bloopers. Oh yes, we're still doing bloopers. That's a few weeks away. Um, uh, news about the Tomb of the Eagles. Very sad. Tomb of the Eagles is uh, is closing permanently, but that's the family side of it is closing permanently. They are in talks with Historic Environment Scotland. Something is going to happen about keeping it um, accessible yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, um, but uh, the most important thing is that uh, Kathleen and Frida are well. It's just yeah. um, everything has got a little bit much for them up there. Yeah. Um, I think uh, last year, uh, last so, straw. <clears throat> yes, indeed. Um, 
Uh, Chris Davis, why does it uh, why does it sound like that when you walk? It's because the it was so wet. You know, I said, you know, I said how it had rained all the time, and it's just it's wet. It's me walking through gloop half the time. Yeah. Um, not not, <laughs> a, not something that's else. All this is. You know, no, it's not been put on in the studio with me walking on gravel or anything. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lynn says, I love the way Rupert says illuminated. Uh, is there another way? Um, uh, <laughs> Did you say illuminated? Um, illu <laughs> I don't know what I said. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Matt says, would the islands have uh, been more accessible by land due to lower sea levels 7,000 years ago? Um, possibly. Possibly. They wouldn't have been walkable. But we do know that, um, in fact, off the coast of Orkney, off the west coast, 300 yards out to sea, they have found another stone circle uh on the sea floor uh so uh, so you know i mean yes obviously sea level has changed that much um uh so it would have been easier uh, and maybe even the waters could have been more navigable if um uh you know if if that was shallower um which is uh, another interesting thought but, yeah good point Oh, I see. Mm. Il you, yes, we do put a, a, a Y in. Illuminate. 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 We do. We don't say illuminate. Well, we could say illuminated. We say illuminated. See, Americans say aluminum when it's aluminium. What do you want? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not start. I was gonna. I was gonna <laughs> say. There is so much that's come out of the ground, you know, and so much about uh, uh, the nest, yeah. uh, the yeah. size of this book, which is a collection of papers, essentially, that have, you know, come out. I mean, it's just, yeah. uh, and I have to confess, completely daunted, even beginning to read this. <laughs> it has to be done. But, yeah. You know, yeah. So, we keep trying so... to pin down Nick Card for an interview, yeah, but, yeah. Um, uh, but he's hard. He's hard to pin down. Hard to pin down. And uh, yeah, a, tw a twig hiker is—is is that how I pronounce twig hiker? Uh, it's, uh, a barn house for me is better than Scarborough Bray. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I don't, uh, barn house isn't. Is barn house open to the public? I don't think is it's it, managed. It, I didn't. Think, I, no, yeah. not in the same um, way. I think you can go to no. it, but I don't think it's yeah. a managed site. Yeah. I maybe uh, um, tell us if we're wrong. Um, yeah. But uh, no, but barn house uh, incredibly important. Yeah, in in the whole scheme of things. Um, <laughs> yes, about it because yes, uh, yes, because they thought it was going to be covered by the sea. Uh, I doubt. I don't know. I doubt it. I don't know. We we don't know. What are you reading? Uh, uh, Jennifer, do you, do you think they might have aban abandoned the nest because they thought it was going to be covered by the sea? Well, they say there is a theory that it was abandoned because of a massive storm. Um, mm. It's possible. But but, don't uh, know, do we? I mean, speculation that can never be confirmed. <laughs> you <know>. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Jeff. It is open all the time. Well, maybe we should um, maybe we should write Barnhouse into the tour. It, into the tour, yeah. Uh, thinking yeah, that, yeah, because yeah. we Thank the you, yeah. uh, the, uh, the dig will be covered up in September as we drive past. Yeah. <laughs> I can see yeah. everybody now all yeah. over one side of the coach looking at the <laughs> all the tires. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's all we'll, we'll be to, to uh, see. Lapis yeah. Philosorum, Philosophorum, uh, did we ever check ringing stones when hit? Uh, no, really didn't. Um, I, uh, uh, I think, I mean, it would be incidental even if they did, because they did just use the local stone that, um, yeah. uh, you know, it's... You know, it's just there in sheets, isn't it? They, they haven't selected... Uh, special stone from uh, from anywhere in particular. It's just the local stone. So if it does ring, then they would all have rung. Uh, I'd be surprised if it does, 
but um, I'm just thinking what kind of... Anyway, it'd be an interesting thing to see. Uh, maybe I will hit one do, with do, something. Do uh, so we need on, to go up on there. Ringing, ringing stones. There are more. Uh, there are more uh, about than you think. I, I don't know of any particular. There reason. are. It's just whether it's a thing or not. Do you yeah. Know? I mean, it's like you know well, they did it... that uh, experiment recently about the acoustics of Stonehenge. Yeah. And uh, and uh, my my issue with it when I put my grouchy skeptical head on is that everything's going to give you an acoustic effect of some sort yeah everything it's Every, unavoidable. Every, everything changes um, the acoustic yeah yeah so to read something into that maybe but it's completely unprovable you know yeah. um the only time i've come i think you know ringing, ringing uh, the only time i've come across, come across a ringing stone was in northern argentina at an inca settlement up there in the, mm -hmm. in, the in the desert um, nice. Yeah, yeah. That had a, a special place. Um, mm. that the, that's the only time I come ac come across. I mean, it really did ring as well. It was it's crazy. It must have been somehow it was hollow for some reason. And uh, yeah, interesting. There is a there is a stone. It's a, it's a kind of cave. It's just where the sea has washed a stone out on the Isle of Man. Uh, that's on the beach uh, when you come down out of the foot of Dune Glen. And if you go in that stone, it's a massive boulder that's just been hollowed mm. out by the sea. And uh, that's just the most amazing acoustics you've ever heard, just yeah. in this hollowed out boulder. Mm. Uh, yeah. And when we talk ringing stones, we're talking about proper ringing, not just a chink. You know, this is yeah. they have a they have a reson actual resonance. So I don't think that, mm. I, first I've heard that the blue stones have any kind of resonance or anything. Uh, I'm not aware of any. Um, mm. Uh, uh, hey, hey, hey. Anyway, we've got rather a bit off uh, off topic. This yeah, is, go on. Uh, 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 yeah, well, where were we? So. Nothing more to say about Stennis and uh, Brogger for the time. Maze how? It was interesting, of course. It was one of because we were up there out of season. Uh, we did uh, have to make special arrangement with the the staff that were around. Uh, mm. at, um, yeah, the, the, at Maze how and at Scarabray. Well, let's go to Scarabray, shall we? Let's do that. Throughout the whole of my journey across the British Isles, I've been used to seeing monumental sites, places that were in some way important to communities, or how they treated the dead. We have very few signs of how people actually lived, because the abundance of forest made wood an easily available source material, so very little evidence of daily life remains. What makes Orkney so special is that unlike most of the rest of the British Isles, it was never forested. So timber would have been a valuable scarcity that was reserved for making things like tools and boats. In 1850, a storm battered the dunes here at Scarabray and uncovered a Neolithic village. There's a strong sense of community here. The houses are close together and linked by communal passageways, but they remain discreet and private. And rarely do we get such an intimate view of our ancestors. Their homes remain almost as intact as the day they were built, complete with beds which would probably have held mattresses of bracken, a central hearth, even a dresser, I have to wonder if the wooden houses across the rest of Britain wouldn't have had the same type of furniture.
I wish I could express just how magical it is. Like putting my feet in a Neolithic ancestor's footprints at Formby Point. I wonder how many people stood on this exact spot, putting away their personal belongings. Or how many people sat here around the fire, talking and laughing over dinner. <laughs> and how many people rested a hand here, stepping into bed, sent shivers up my spine. But even though I could end my journey here, I still have one more thing to show you. Mm. <clears throat> oh, lordy, lordy, what can you say? Um, uh, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a very profound uh, experience there. Uh, uh, who commented? I saw that somebody said, uh, lucky to get in there. Who was it said that? Um, uh, we actually, um, you know, when we were asking permission uh, to film, uh, was, mm -hmm. it was then Historic Scotland, now Historic Environment Scotland. And and they said that we, could, uh, we couldn't go in uh, the actual buildings. We could film in the... Uh, the reproduction um, house, and we said, we "Don't want to." Then we're not going to show people anything that's not real. Bear in mind yeah. that we were—I mean, we were pretty much guerrilla filmmaking. We yeah. really, you know, we hadn't set things up in advance because we knew they would ask for money. Mm. If we sort of sounded like a professional, well. <laughs> <laughs> a true. film company making something for television and that's the assumption everybody made people weren't thinking in terms of small outfits making stuff for YouTube and stuff like that they automatically think oh mm. there's money so <coughs> the conversation comes to a dead end um, mm. if, if so we, we we did it guerrilla style and just turned up at these places and, and negotiated mm. on, on the spot it seemed to work <laughs> it, it, it did <laughs> work and uh, and and that was it. That you know, uh, when when we said, well, "I'm not interested," then we, we're not interested in showing people anything that isn't real. Mm. And uh, and so they said, oh, "All right then." Um, and uh, yeah, just every kind of wow, every kind of wow. Because um, mm -hmm. it's, it's you know, as I said in the thing, it's that that colossal difference between uh, between something that's you know tombs or whatever it is so okay it was living people that made those things but it was still not related to daily life other than in reverence to their departed and all of that so to be somewhere where it's actually where people lived for generations is it's just amazing absolutely mm -hmm. amazing um yeah yeah just just in the hiatus, just to backtrack, KW says, you know, because you mentioned in the preamble to the section about there being no trees on Orkney, KW says that they are finding evidence of trees during the Mesolithic on Orkney, which is... Uh, uh, indeed there are, yes. True, yes. Um, that's something they've been finding, in fact, over, uh, well, over the years since we made the film, actually, they've been finding yeah. more and more evidence of that. I think the... Um, uh, you, you're still left, though, with the um, you know the, the basic reality of life on Orkney that that where you've got elsewhere in Britain, you just had these swathes of forest where timber was just this almost limitless supply of building yeah. material. Uh, whereas on Orkney, yes, there were trees, but it was not like the dense forest of big trees that you get everywhere else. And the stone on Orkney is just such the, uh, the most practical building material. You know, it's all in reasonably even sheets that you can, you know, whether you cleave them or stack them or whatever. It's you, because it's like stacking dominoes. They just they balance so solidly that why would you want to use timber when you've got something that, that you know, is put, put it there. It's like Lego bricks. They're just going to stay there. Um, yeah, they'd have used timber for the the uh, the roofs as well. Uh, I yeah. mean, the, the the reconstruction is actually made with well, is it hide roofs? 
Hyde whale wounds, bone, but it, but... Um, whale bone and hide, I think. But yeah. you know, it Turf, could have been timber whale bone with turf a, and. A, yeah. Whalebone is a resource that I don't think they'd have been able to. That's a found resource and not something you could mm. uh, absolutely rely on because I don't yeah. think we're whaling. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, but uh, KW again is uh, correct, right about the uh, the drainage system as well. Oh yes, you were you were able to. Uh, we they they yeah. showed us the drainage system and the and the iron rung. They've got iron. They they've put. <laughs> <laughs> the iron rung is going down in. <laughs> it goes deep. Yeah. That drainage does system. go deep. You, you, does you go. can go down into it. It's uh, amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. When you think that they had a complete sewage system thousands of years before the Romans got it together, um, it's quite impressive. Oh, somebody spotted the window at the back of room number one there. Yes, the, the, the right now that was uh, that was um, the the only. Uh, modern uh, conceit, unreal conceit. thing. Yes. yes, modern conceit was because um, I'm having a senior moment. What's the name of the guy that excavated it? Um, Child, it's not Gordon, Robson. Child. Uh, Child Gordon. 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 That's the. Uh, that's what's giving me the O's in my head. Uh, yes, uh, that uh, his daughter, his young daughter, thought that it was really sad that these people didn't have windows and. Uh, uh, so she wanted. Uh, she said he should put a window in. He put that in just for his daughter. Um, yeah, it's quite sweet, really. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions or comments on or, or uh, um, illumination? Stone roofs makes more sense. Um, the thing about stone roofs is that uh, it means corbelling, and corbelling yeah. is that's a piece of work. You know, I, you can understand yeah. them doing it for a for a, a burial True. site, I think. But mm -hmm. um, uh, but for something that's going to be permanently lived, and I can completely understand why they didn't use stone roofs. Um, mm. But uh, but know. yeah, I mean, I know what you mean. But yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just um, scrolling, I don't want to <laughs> miss anything. No. Uh, what did the Romans ever do for them? <laughs> 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 uh, days. No, mm. no, nothing uh, uh, more to be said. Uh, but um, yeah, thank you again. Were there any Scarabray burials of Scarabray? For... No, no, none found um, at all. Um, mm. In fact, I'd have to think about where's the nearest known burial to Scarabray. I can't think of, off the top of my head. Oh, good um, question. I can't yes. think either. If anybody yeah. knows, answers on the postcard, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Shall I move on to the last yeah. destination? Okay. Thanks, folks. Stand by. I'm on the island of South Ronaldsay, about 40 miles from Skara Bray. In 1958, at the same time that my mother was waddling around pregnant with me, Ronald Simerson was walking his land here when he stumbled upon an exposed section of stone wall beneath his feet. He had discovered quite by accident a chambered tomb dating from the Neolithic period, which turned out to have been in continuous use for about 800 years, well into the early Bronze Age. When it was excavated, it was found to contain not only human bones, but those of sea eagles as well. An extraordinary discovery of an unknown cult who seemed to revere these magnificent birds to the extent that they included them in their burials. But exciting as that is, it's not why we're here. When excavations were complete, the tomb had given up a wealth of grave goods. A short distance away from the tomb, close to Ronald Simerson's home, is an intimate and informative museum now run by his daughters Kathleen and Frida. Amongst the relics and treasures from the tomb housed here are human and animal remains, numerous tools, polished axe heads, some jewellery, and this. A button of polished albertite more finely made than any in your mother's button box. How many times might this have been touched in the simplest of daily routines? 
How was it actually worn or used? And how many times did someone struggle to get a thread through so fine a hole? My journey has taken me from tantalizing signs of life to intimate signs of lives, ways of life so familiar that they can't fail to bring our ancestors alive in our minds. Across the whole of the British Isles, we've seen evidence of shared knowledge, community, interaction between people across huge distances. The next time you find yourself wondering, how did we lose track of those people? Where did they go? Remind yourself, they didn't go anywhere. We're still here. I will uh, r let the titles run at the end uh, when we've uh, uh, finished that. Um, that for me, uh, getting to uh, the Tomb of the Eagles at uh, the end of uh, this film was a kind of a fin de siècle for me, a sort of a, a pilgrimage thing, because I don't think there would be a standing with stones, and uh, we wouldn't be the prehistory guys now if I hadn't picked up uh, a book in Banbury Library. Oh, my goodness, how many years ago? Probably 40 years ago. Um, uh, that just so in, intrigued. Oh, it's, hold on. <clears throat> um, this one by uh, uh, John W. Hedges. Uh, this is not the. I, this is this is not the one from the library. I didn't nick it. This was one I found and bought later. <laughs> when you say that now, <laughs> yeah, it was a hardback. This is a, a paperback. <laughs> But I tell you, this this book uh, told such a human story, A, of uh, Ronnie Simerson uh, in a, and his family um, and his uh, efforts to find out what was uh, under, his, the, under the surface of his land, frustrated with the uh, uh, acad academia that refused to come down and, and do a proper job. He, you know, it's that story where the local guy does it himself. Um, you know, there's controversy around it a little bit, but mm. it's a compelling story, and uh, the detail that's come out of it, you know, which which Mr. Hedges goes into in, in great detail, um, just well touched a nerve with me. So it mm. was, you know, for me, it was fabulous. Over to you, Mr. Solskin. <laughs> It was fabulous. I, thank you for people commenting on my words. Uh, oh, I'm uh, and, uh, yeah, you uh, knocked it out of the park there, Mr. Sosk. Absolutely <laughs> flipping. Well, looking. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you like him. Yeah, do you know what? I mean, um, is it Tillman said? Was it Tillman said? Who's still got a, a button box or something? I've lost the comment. Um, yeah, my mum had a button box. I used to spend ages going through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, it, the thing is, you know, um, uh, somebody else commented. I'm sorry, your, the comments are flying up, and I've I've missed them. But somebody commented about, oh, it was Joan. You said, <laughs> um, oh, that was my last comment. Somebody said, my, um, oh, it's Cork. You said that my passion for items that were part of everyday life gives you goosebumps. It's yeah. that thing, though, isn't yeah. it? That. Uh, that w when you take something, you know, it's like the, my fascination with my cabinet of knickknacks you know that if you've got things that that you know a, a thousand years ago two thousand three thousand four thousand you know whatever you've got something that belonged to somebody and you know that they handled it on a daily basis and uh, it's just for me it's just such a profound connection with that person even though you don't know who they were the fact that you know a button it's a button they wore it you know what on a cold day or you know what yeah. it's it's that it's um it it's sharing you know it's crossing time and space um yeah. it's so profound uh, and well, i don't I think, think we should I... ever take that kind of thing for granted mm -hmm. yeah. well quite right and i think that's a great hope for standing with stones too 
that with the help of our friends in academia and, and the rest, that we'll be able to touch on this kind of thing much more and tell uh, a much more closer to the ground story than we did in, um, uh, although we ended up there, um, uh, closer to the ground story with Standing With Stones 2 uh, that tells the story of the people. And hopefully we can get close through these kinds of artefacts and um, other means uh, closer mm. to the people that um, you know, were responsible for leaving the stuff in, in the landscape. Uh, you know, mm. that we won't be, as we did in Standing with Stones 1, you know, bouncing from one stone in the ground to another, to put it crudely. <laughs> mm. uh, beautiful, yes. though, to, uh, 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 beautiful exercise, though, it, it is. Um, <laughs> we, we're, we're aiming to tell a more human uh, story through time. So, you know, that's, that, that's where we're at with that. Um, yeah. I, I'm so, I, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you know that end sequence did work for people. That, that uh, the way that it it did. Um, mm. uh, I, I think you forget that you've been watching something for two and a quarter hours. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. you know, at the end there. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's good. Tomb of the Eagles itself, though, the little museum, of course, that you saw there, um, uh, that is closing. Um, oh, somebody asked, uh, did you film that in a hurricane? Well, it is Orkney. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and you're right, yeah. <laughs> right on the coast down at the bottom of uh, yeah. South Ronaldsea uh, there. Yeah. So, yeah, you'd be pretty lucky not to hear the wind blowing, blowing through the rafters. And I, I purposely mm. left that in. I, I may have even had a wild track that I, because it was important that you feel that sort of loneliness and emptiness at the, down there. Mm. Um, though the, the museum did used to get pretty thronged down there, but you know the wind do blow, uh, and it, it was it do. part 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 of the atmosphere of the place, letting that uh, <laughs> sound was round. Uh, mm, mm. Um. Yeah, it's uh, it, do you know it's funny. I mean, a lot of people have commented on uh, on the ending there, and we, we you know we were lucky. We were lucky. It just it all came together. It was uh, you know, we were lucky. Okay. Um, and uh, I have to say, it's with some trepidation, really, that I'm thinking, oh god, got to follow that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, what have we done? Uh, um, yeah. KW said um, you should have gone in on the trolley. <laughs> I tell you what, there'd have been yeah, more yeah. material for the blooper reel then. Uh, there would have been. Because there's no way of going into the Tomb of the Eagles on that trolley dignified. No. No. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, dear, oh dear. It, 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 uh, I think know, at uh, this uh, stage uh, in the film, it would have been his distraction, actually, watching you struggle getting down on the trolley it, it, and hauling yeah, yourself Yeah, it through. would have just become comedy. But, um, yeah. uh, do you know, it's a funny thing, I have to say, you know, as a, a complete aside, something that, that it, it still surprises me to this day, that uh, the Tomb of the Eagles has been uh, somewhere that can be visited by the public for a long time now. And it amazes me that Kathleen and Frieda and Ronald Simerson, when he was doing anything to do with it, oh, yeah. uh, that that they never made that, uh, you, you know, the way into it, that they never made it more practical. You know, it's just this yeah. this crappy trolley. That you <laughs> Bless them. I mean, I can't, you know, I, I actually rather like that they did that, but it, I, I'm still surprised. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, indeed. Mm. Uh, Cork says, "Oh, do mm. please take the trolley for standing with stones too." <laughs> Gosh, uh, neither dear. of us are as, quite as flexible yeah. as we were fifteen years ago. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, uh, I I can't tell a lie. That up until two years ago, uh, I was in the gym at least uh, at least once a week, every week, and doing a lot of exercise. And over the last two years since COVID hit, I've just got busier and busier and busier and have been spending most of my time sitting here. And I am unfit, uh, some pounds heavier than I was. 
and I really need to uh, sort my life out because <laughs> otherwise it's not progress. Yeah. Oh, one yeah. glorious thing yeah. was, of course, that we did get to meet Ronald Simonson when we were. When we, we did, were yeah, yeah, before he died. Yeah, we were. Uh, yeah, that was a moment, actually. Oh, yeah. That was a moment. Uh, we'll remember um, him, but I don't think he'll remember us. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so oh, nice, you know, because yeah. we, uh, we, we, you know, we got that we'd never met Kathleen and Frieda before, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and we just, you know, we were chatting to them and uh, uh, and asked about Ronald, and uh, and they said, "Oh, would you want to say hello?" And he was yeah. just sitting in his armchair, little old man sitting in his armchair, very quietly, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Oh well, hmm. a few. Uh, a few... <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. It's smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, mm. uh, anything more to say uh, on the matter? I think we've um, we've run our course, unfortunately. Uh, folks. We've yeah. run our course, and I'm I'm really glad that uh, that you all enjoy it. Uh, mm -hmm. We, we mm -hmm. are going to carry on doing these. <laughs> So the next one's going to be the unseen footage, and then the bloopers will come after that. But I think which will be the week after. To... It's my wedding anniversary next Thursday night, and I don't think Sharon, my wife, will be <laughs> too happy if she's, I spend. She's it. already seen the film quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so so uh, yeah, we'll 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 put the uh, we'll put the date up. I can't know what date is it that we're doing that. Oh, um, good point. It would have been the 27th. But so it would have been the 27th. It's not the 27th. It's going to be the 3rd. Thank you, Pick. So yeah. the, so the 3rd you, of June is going to be the unseen footage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay, Mike, in that mm. case, you can have a pass. <laughs> Thank you, Pick. <laughs> uh, cheers. Thank you, Rebecca. Um We'll do our How do you best. restore a stone artifact? Chris says. Well, that depends. Uh, that depends what kind of stone artifact it is. Uh, it could be just uh, getting concretions off it, and uh, you know, just cleaning it. Really, sometimes you get build up of uh, of other minerals over the years, and it's just taking it back to how it was at the time. Mm. Um, mm. All right, we'll do our best to keep you informed, so and uh, so you get a, a clear run up and a, and a heads up as to what's happening and when. Mm. Uh, but guys, uh, thank you so much. It's it's been real, and uh, thank you so much for your company and your kind words uh, mm. and your support. Um, so with that, I shall uh, say uh, run credits, Rupert. What do you say? I say run credits and uh, and and thanks, folks. We'll yeah. see you next time. Cheerio. Take care. See ya.